Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant. In the past, I have shared my opinion on exhibitions in the game of tennis. To me, they are not fun or funny. The things that you normally see in an exhibition get old quite fast. It's the usual four guys at the net volleying to each other and then maybe a guy, you know, hits the ball with his head or it's the between the legs behind the back shots or the classic let the ball kid hit some balls back and forth. Stuff like that gets old pretty quick. And to me personally, it's boring, but I understand that some people do get a kick out of those type of tennis exhibitions. And unfairly, the Labor Cup is labeled often by haters as a tournament that's just an exhibition. I can tell you that despite the Labor Cup technically being an exhibition, it's one of my favorite events of the year. And the primary reason why that's the case is the fact that I get to hear professional players coaching other professional players. And it's not only entertaining, but I as a tennis coach learn a lot from those conversations. Now, I made a video a while back talking about some of the best things that I've heard when the big three were coaching each other during changeovers. I highly recommend that you check this video out. And on Threads, which is something similar uh, to X owned by Meta that's connected to Instagram. In any case, I'm not a big fan of X, but I do post from time to time on Threads and I ask the question if the Labor Cup can survive without the big three. And the responses were very positive. People seem to love the Labor Cup. So I do think that the Labor Cup has a bright future and the guys are playing for real in the Labor Cup. You can just tell that these matches mean a lot to them, even though it's technically just an exhibition. And in the past, Team Europe had absolutely dominated team world, understandably so, with Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer on the team and all these other players. But interestingly, team world won two in a row. And John Macro in his last year as coach wanted to get one more win and get a three-peat. And he almost did it. But Carlos Alcaraz almost single-handedly won the Labor Cup for Team Europe this year. And let me talk about Carlos Alcaraz because I've been watching him very closely post the US Open. In my video that I made after Alcaraz lost to Van den Zandskulp at the US Open, I was worried that Alcaraz might go through the same type of slump that he went through in 2023 after losing a very tough match to Djokovic in Cincinnati. And this year, after losing that heartbreaker in the final of the Olympics to Djokovic again, Carlos Alcaraz played one of his worst matches that he's ever played in Cincinnati and then followed that up with also a poor performance at the US Open. But in that video, I said that Alcaraz will learn from his mistakes in the past. He will mature as a player. And I actually don't think that Alcaraz is gonna go through that same type of slump. I think Alcaraz is going to finish the season very strong. And there was a turning point that got Alcaraz out of his slump, and it was the Davis Cup match against Mahaj, where in the first set, Alcaraz played terrible and lost that set 7-6, was making a tremendous amount of unforced errors. And then early in the second set, Alcaraz made a spectacular point finishing it off with an incredible backhand volley drop shot. The crowd exploded and ever since that point, Alcaraz has been playing unbelievable. So Mahaj had to default in that match, but Alcaraz had another match in Davis Cup where he played really well against Umber. He said that that was one of the best matches that he's played all year. And at the Labor Cup, Alcaraz played well in doubles and he played exceptionally well in singles, beating Ben Shelton, four and four and in the final match beating fritz two and five i do want to mention how good the americans are and tommy paul was missing but tfo fritz and shelton played phenomenal fritz beat zverev again tfo beat medvedev shelton beat medvedev fritz and shelton beat alcaraz and zverev in doubles shelton paired with tabilo destroyed rude and Tsitsipas. and tfo and shelton did end up losing the very important doubles match to alcaraz and rude american tennis is doing so great as I said in some of my previous videos, we can have a situation where we have six Americans in the top 20. If you look at the tournament in Tokyo, there are so many Americans in the draw. But the big question is, does the general audience care about these guys? Do these guys have a superstar status in the United States? Absolutely not, because that will only happen when 
one of these guys wins a Grand Slam or if one of these guys wins the US Open. If you take a look at the viewership numbers, despite many Americans doing well at this year's US Open, the numbers were down. Yes, there was a dispute between DirecTV and ESPN, which could have contributed to some of the lower numbers. But the general audience outside from the real tennis fans are not so excited about a guy like Fritz or Paul. I do think that Shelton and TFO do get a little bit more attention than those other two guys. But what's missing for American male tennis is a Grand Slam title. And will that ever happen? Well, just listen to my last Monday morning rant from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's going to be very tough because we have unbelievable players at the top of the game uh, that are going to be hard to go through at the Grand Slam level. And another thing that was a little bit of a controversy and something that I talked about in my Mickelson video from three or four weeks ago was Medvedev throwing his racket and there was a big debate whether he should have gotten disqualified. And I've talked about this before. It appears that people are waiting for somebody to get hurt. And we all understand that players get angry on the court. And there is a code of conduct that works. But when it comes to putting somebody else's health in danger, that's where I draw the line. So if you are throwing the racket while it's in your hand, or if you're throwing a racket right in front of you on the ground, uh, that's something else. You're not really putting anybody else's health in danger. But if you're shooting a ball out of the stands or into the fence, or if you're throwing your racket helicopter style like Medvedev did in a very reckless way, you don't have control over the thing that you're hitting or throwing. It can accidentally hit someone. Of course, Medvedev did not intend to hurt anyone, but he could have because when you throw a racket, you can't control it that well, or maybe the racket or the ball can ricochet off something and it hit somebody in the eye and that person can be in a lot of trouble because of that so for that reason we cannot wait or make the rules so that we disqualify someone if they hit a person but we have to make an automatic disqualification anytime somebody hits a ball into the stands or throws a racket into the back fence because with those rules in place players will think twice before they shoot a ball into the stands or throw their racket like Medvedev did. I want to finish off this Monday morning rant with my favorite thing this year about the Labor Cup, and it was Grigor Dimitrov. He was very vocal during the changeovers, and I really enjoyed what he had to say. The way he was coaching during the changeovers in a calm manner, it appeared very caring, and he was also giving some excellent tips. So I think after Grigor retires, I think he could be an excellent coach on the ATP Tour. But the Labor Cup is great for that reason and many others don't hate on it. The timing of it is phenomenal. A couple of weeks after the US Open, it keeps the tennis fans engaged because some of them like to tune out and not watch any tennis until next year's Australian Open. So I'm a big supporter for the Labor Cup and I really only have one complaint and that's the court color. 